So hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Nicholas Mazidis, and uh, I'm uh, an endocrinologist. I work at Marietta Memorial Hospital in the endocrine group. And uh, I'm joining you today as part of our annual diabetes health fair with Marietta Memorial Hospital. This year, it's a virtual event because of the fact that uh, we have certain precautions we have to observe based on the health department guidelines uh, due to the COVID concerns in our community. So I'm gonna be sharing some thoughts with you about diabetes, which is of interest to all of us. And I have with me today a patient of mine, uh, Mark, who uh, had uh, issues that uh, relate to diabetes. And uh, he's gonna explain some of that and he'll have some questions that I'm sure all of you will uh, probably share and uh, I'll try to give some information that clarifies things that you and your parents may be concerned about. All right, well, um, hello everyone. Long time ago, uh, when I was, uh, Dr. Mazis has been my doctor for as long as I can remember. And I think it was back when I was in high school and I was dropping weight very quickly for wrestling and my weight was always fluctuating up and down quite a bit. And since diabetes runs in the family, mom had some concerns and so she started having uh, Dr. Mazidis look into, uh, into my situation just to make sure. And everything turned out to be fine, but uh, he was concerned, uh, there was a concern about some of the foods that I was eating. I was eating a traditional American diet, which is basically garbage. And there was a lot of uh, nutritional advice that, that Dr. Mazidis gave me, and it really affected my life, uh, helping me drop a lot of weight and, and get, get a lot stronger. And it helped me not only in my wrestling endeavors, but also in college and afterwards. Uh, and, I, and I largely uh, credit my, my strong health uh, and, and vitality to the advice he gave me a long time ago. And, uh, you know, and we still talk regularly. He's still my doctor. And so my thought was that since uh, diabetes is a problem, especially, you know, it's a growing problem among younger people, especially now the kids spend a lot of their time staying home, playing video games, there aren't as many outdoor activities. This might be a really good opportunity to talk about some of the stuff that worked for me and advice for, for younger people in general. That's great, Mark, and I'll be happy to take questions you feel would relate to our young friends who are joining us today for our seminar and for their families. Okay, well, my, my first question is, is relating to, to nutritional advice, because uh, that was sort of the big thing. Back, uh, back when I was younger, you had me uh, get on to, you're probably the first doctor I heard talking about eating an organic diet, eating, uh, uh, you know, don't eat all the complicated stuff that comes into a box, you know, from a box. If I don't recognize what the ingredients are, then I probably shouldn't eat it. And, and so I, I vastly simplified my, my diet and started focusing on where the food came from, not just, you know, what it said on, on the label. And I'm curious if your, uh, if, if your advice has changed since then over the years, uh, and, and what you would advise people today, especially since it's, you know, it's maybe a little, people are a little bit more conscious now about where, where food comes from. Absolutely, and I think you're right that people are more conscious now. I think the media have picked up on the message and we hear more and more about uh, various types of diets, healthy diets. People are more interested in the food supply. I think a lot of the stores are now offering uh, food that uh, we can recognize the concept of, uh, farm to fork uh, so we're lucky here in uh, ohio that uh, we have farm country around us which uh, provides us with a lot of the good nutrients and would like to encourage people to be thinking that way uh, as we had discussed there's a healthy plate concept the way you choose your food and the way you put it on your plate so that you have a nice mix of nutrients and uh, what i like to remind people is that we're not speci specifically talking about a diabetes diet. We're talking about a healthy diet, which benefits everybody. People like yourself who had concerns about preventing diabetes, people who have diabetes, people who are just overweight and they just want to get healthy and stronger. So it relates to the whole family. And as I said, and as you mentioned, it's a simple concept because it starts with good food, basic ingredients, things that you can recognize. So we're talking fruit, we're talking vegetables, we're talking the milk and butter and eggs and meat and cheese, the basics. 
we're trying to avoid a lot of these things that come in little boxes and bottles uh, with all sorts of colors that look appealing, but uh, I think it's more gimmick uh, than it is really nutrition. It's something we might enjoy once in a while because it's kind of like a special event or a little trip to the circus or something, but uh, that would not be the basis of our diet. So I guess uh, you recall, we had spoken a little bit about the plate, mm -hmm. the healthy plate, and uh, we'll be putting up some images of that plate for our uh, patients and also for our good friends uh, watching this video. Um, and uh, we remind them also that it's uh, something that I describe in my book, a blueprint for a healthy diet your diet guide for the new millennium. Uh, the basic concept I'm gonna show you here is the lunch and dinner plate, which comes on this uh, description and uh, drawing. And you see here how half of the plate has vegetables. That's the foundation. And you see that there's a place for the protein, the meat uh, or the fish or whatever you're planning to put there, the hamburger. And then you have a slot, which is about a cup's worth of starch and that starch could be the macaroni, the bread, uh, uh, the rice. And then uh, you also have a slot there, which is another cup's worth of fruit. So that's more than enough food for that particular meal. And specifically, the vegetables are very important to stress and emphasize because that's what the digestion appreciates. So the process of digestion in your gut very much appreciates vegetables. It gives you a comfortable experience. And again, you're not having too many calories in the process. When it comes to a breakfast, which is also depicted here, you see. Here again, you see we have a little bit more starch depicted. That could be your toast. It could be the pancake. And then you see there's a slot there for the egg or some other form of protein. It could be some yogurt, you know, whole fat. And uh, that kind of balances the plate together with some fruit. Now, if you notice, there's a cup there that's for your beverage. And usually the beverage that we recommend would be milk or water. Sometimes people like some flavored water. Or it could be some herbal tea. We try to avoid the soft drinks. We try to avoid the juices. Because there you're bringing a lot of sugar into your diet. And uh, sugar in the diet just stimulates insulin. If you're producing insulin, insulin tends to make people gain weight. Or for those people who are taking insulin injections, it just requires more insulin to be injected to cover for all of that starch and sugar. And then again, insulin makes people gain weight. Uh, and under circumstances, it might also create other types of problems leading to water swelling and things like that water retention. So our objective is to have a good balanced diet so that uh, if we need to be given insulin, if we're taking insulin, we'll need less insulin. And that just serves our health better. And uh, if we're not using insulin right now, we're probably going to be able to avoid getting to that point. Or if we, even if we don't have diabetes, our body won't be stimulated to make too much insulin, which, uh, as I said, promotes weight gain and we don't really we want to be strong like mark was saying uh, you know to build up muscle but we don't want to put on too much fat because fat uh too much fat in the body being deposited in the liver and in other areas probably is going to make us unhealthy in the long run and cause problems well there's a there's some advice that you gave me because it's once you're on the healthy diet you know that's you just keep on doing it but uh, at, at the time, you know, especially when I was in, uh, you know, in high school and, and also the beginning of college, I was drinking a lot of soda and eating a lot of garbage. And you'd given me some advice that was instead of trying to fix everything all at once, just start replacing the bad stuff. So I replaced, you know, I replaced my soda with drinking tea. I, I replaced uh, eating chips with, you know, eating like fruits and stuff, uh, just, you know, healthier snacks. And I just started over over time, just getting rid of all the bad stuff and replacing it with healthier alternatives. And that seemed to be pretty easy for me. I don't know if I could have made the transition all in one, all in one step, 
Uh, is that still is that still your advice to, to younger people nowadays, or how do you advise them? Because it seems that the uh, the choice in food has gone from bad when I was a kid to now just outright terrible. And that's an excellent point that you're making, Mark, because uh, it's very true. You can't make abrupt changes, and you can't expect that people are going to go from one way of doing things tomorrow morning. They're going to change just everything across the board. That's not easy, and especially if we're talking about the whole family kind of joining in. So uh, the simple beginning is to take care of what we drink, the beverage. And the beverage, as you said, would be something that uh, we could offer to our dog, or that's how I like to see it, or to our pet, so it might be our horse, it might be our cat, something that we can offer them, we would also be drinking. So obviously, a lot of these sodas and uh, the fancy drinks that you see, the animals wouldn't appreciate at all. And if we force them to drink those things, they probably would get quite sick and they wouldn't be with us for long. So uh, something that's not fit for our dog to drink, we wouldn't be drinking either. And I think that makes it simple. So that's where we would start. We would take out the sodas. We would take out all of these uh, uh, fancy drinks that are full of sugar usually. And uh, we would focus in on the milk that we mentioned and on the water uh, and uh, on tea, of course, because there's all sorts of interesting teas that give flavor to the water. Uh, and it could be healthy because we're not talking about caffeine or anything that's a stimulant. These are nice tasting uh, drinks that could be cold or warm and uh, people enjoy them. And you see them also featured in some of the supermarkets. So. Uh, that's how I would start. Now, the other thing that I emphasize to people is, you know, we don't really have an objection to your putting something that you enjoy on the plate, but I would encourage you to read the label. And when you read the label, if the label looks too complicated and you really can't make much sense because there are all sorts of fancy chemical terms, then I probably would skip it because yeah. it has things that you don't need. I mean, if there's a muffin that the your mother makes at home. That muffin is probably very simple, has its eggs, has a little bit of sugar, perhaps flour. Uh, and uh, that's about, you know, where we're at. In the case of what you see in the supermarkets, you'll see, you know, several lines of all sorts of ingredients that have to do with preservatives and things that we don't need. So if there's a complicated label, that's probably something you want to avoid. And that's why we recommend, you know, going for those vegetables and the other things. And uh, and I remind people also, we get a little picky with our food, right? You'd like to know where the food's coming from. So if we're going to have an egg, it's nice to know a little bit about the chicken. And uh, as we're, you know, in the age now that we can appreciate these things, you take a look. And it's written on the box. It'll say that these eggs are from, for example, chickens that uh, are free range or that are not fed any uh, antibiotics. And that's actually something that probably we want to select because there's so many things now in the diet that uh, cause allergies and uh, can cause problems. You know, we started trying to eat a particular food and all of a sudden that created some issues and we broke out in a rash or something. So we want to keep it simple and we want to make sure that we're picking food, which is not very much processed to put on the plate. And from that point on, if you have the variety, we don't have any particular objection to the fact that you might like some ice cream or the fact that you might like a brownie and so on, as long as it's planned into that plate concept. Because obviously, if all you're going to have is a brownie for lunch, that's not really a balanced meal. You're missing out on some important nutrients. So yes, you can have a little bit of a brownie, but it'll probably be a smaller piece because we've got to make some room, let's say, for the turkey and a slice of good bread and some butter and so on and so forth. So um, we try to keep to that concept. We're trying to balance things out and we want to be picky. And as Mark was saying, over time, you develop your style, things that you pick and things that you enjoy. But at the same time, you're always keeping in mind the proportions on that plate, right? You don't want to be extreme. Well, here's a, another another piece of advice you gave me. Uh, you know, after college, I was working. I was doing a lot of uh, field work. I was always traveling, and I ended up putting on a bunch of weight again. 
uh, because I was always having to eat out. There wasn't ever really good food sources when I'm when I'm traveling. And uh, you uh, you uh, you told me something along the lines of it's better to skip a meal than it is to eat something bad. You know, if your only choice is going to McDonald's, then just skip skip lunch and wait till you get back home uh, for a proper supper. How how's your thinking on that? Has that evolved or is that still pretty much? Because I started bringing along like a block of cheese with me, or I'd bring along some healthy snacks with me uh, if I knew I was going to be overnight someplace. Otherwise, I just started, you know, skipping skipping the fast food places or just skipping even normal restaurants. Uh, put all kinds of stuff in their food to make it taste better. That turns out uh, turns out to not be so healthy. Uh, where's your well, thinking at on that now? That's an excellent point, Mark, that you're bringing up. Good that you remember, uh, because. Uh, as we tell people, and you remember because you were wrestling, as you said, so there's gear that you probably were taking along in your duffel bag because you were going after school, let's say, for wrestling or whatever the sport is. And so there's a certain preparation, and we all know that. So uh, the same way that you prepare yourself with your gear and your socks and your special shoes and whatever else you carry for your sport, you should have a bag where you have some food and drink in the bag because you have to be prepared. You're not going to expect to go to your sport and start borrowing other people's gear because you didn't bring your own. Nobody appreciates that. And in the same way, we're not going to be very popular if we're going to be arriving for a meal and then we just have to make do with whatever's there or we're going to have to take things from other people because we haven't prepared ourselves and we know that certain things are not good. So the best thing to do, especially for those of us who are in school, we need to prepare ourselves and in our bag, we'll have prepared our sandwich, we'll have prepared our drink, a thermos bottle, whatever it is, in order to kind of have a good healthy choice. And that doesn't mean that uh, you may not also enjoy something else that might be good and you see it on the menu at your school or cafeteria or wherever you are, but you're prepared. If there's nothing there, you have your own stuff. Now, as Mark said, if we are not prepared and uh, there's nothing good that we're looking at here or they're proposing that we eat something which we know is not a good choice well it's probably a good idea just to skip that you know just you might want to drink some water or something but if you can kind of discipline yourself and skip that you're probably better off because i tell people it's like an automobile and uh, you know uh, either if you've been driving or your parents have been driving you know that you have to put in the type of gas into that vehicle. So if it's usually a passenger vehicle, there's premium gas or regular gas, but there's also a diesel pump at many of these places. Well, you're not supposed to use that fuel in your vehicle because that could damage the vehicle. And so uh, if it so happens that at this particular gas station where you pull up, all they have is diesel, well, then you have a choice. You either go a little bit further to a gas station that has the fuel that you really should be using. Or if uh, you forgot and you ran out of gas at that gas station, well, then you're going to have to call and somebody's going to have to come and help you and take you to the location where you can fill a tank, a canister, and bring it back and fill up your car. In other words, with that thought process, we're not going to default and just take anything because that's what it's there. Uh, it's a good idea to protect our body because what you put into the body doesn't necessarily disappear. There might be chemicals or all sorts of things. Once they're in the system, they become part of you. And uh, we need to remember that, right? You are what you eat. The food that you eat becomes part of you. Part of it becomes energy, part is in your tissues. And we know also that uh, if we take a little biopsy of tissue, we take a snippet of tissue and look at it you know, under the microscope and process it, we can tell from that little snippet of fat tissue from your body what type of diet you're on, you see. So it's not like it disappeared. I'll eat this, it'll go through me, and that's the end of that. No, it's not the end of that. And you can imagine what happens with people who day in, day out, over years, they're just not eating the right stuff, like Mark was saying that becomes part of them and it influences their health and if we want to get our health back it's a process of kind of working slowly to reverse things 
Well, and because it takes, uh, I think I read somewhere that it takes about 10 years for your cells to fully recycle themselves, or most of your cells in your body get replaced about every about every 10 years. It takes a long time. If you start eating properly now, it'll still take many years to get all the garbage out of your system. Uh, so it's not going to be an instant process. Uh, That's true, but it's also true that uh, people, young people, their body is in a rapid turnover. There's there's a lot of growth going on. There's things. So therefore, for them, uh, the change happens more swiftly. Okay. They'll see things more swiftly than an older person where things are a little bit more sluggish. And you're right. I mean, they'll make a change, but they won't see the benefits immediately, let's say, as quickly, perhaps, as a younger person might. So I wanted to ask about vitamins. Uh, one of the things that you were really big on when I was younger, I used to have really bad allergies. And in addition to having uh, you know changes in my nutrition, you also had me taking a bunch of vitamins. And, and now I basically never get sick and my allergies are very mild compared to all of my friends. Uh, so where's, where, where's your opinions on vitamins these days? Mark, I think that vitamins are very useful because unfortunately, the diet, the way it's set up, no matter what we do, we can't really replenish all of the vitamins that we need, particularly if we have a problem like diabetes. Diabetes makes special demands on the body. And uh, these special demands have to do also with inflammation because diabetes and poor, di poor sugar control creates uh, a fire in the body, if you will. It's an inflammation, like flame. Right. And so that fire damages tissue pretty uh, if it's you know uncontrolled pretty much like it would happen in your home in your kitchen or whatever if you have a, a flame that's not confined to the fireplace is, is that why so diabetics like, often lose limbs and stuff or is that they important? do okay. they can do that right because these flames that we're talking about this inflammation can damage their blood vessels it can damage tissues it can damage eyes so we don't like these uncontrolled flames, so to speak, this inflammation. And one way of improving the situation besides having good blood sugars is to give vitamins such as vitamin D, which uh, serve like a fire extinguisher, among other things. And they block that uh, inflammation. They, they, they calm things down a little bit. They quench the flames. And uh, that's helpful to us because in the long run, the complications that Mark mentioned, you know, where people might lose a limb or something like that. Well, that didn't need to happen. And we may very well be preventing all of that. That's what we're trying to do. So vitamin D is one of those vitamins that we use. Vitamin B, as in boy, you know, it's a bunch of vitamins under the name vitamin B. B1, B6, B12. Those vitamins are very important because they protect your nervous tissue, your nerves that allow you to move your hands and to speak and to feel things. So we want to protect that because people who are poorly controlled with diabetes later on in life, they really don't feel things very well. They don't feel the, the toes properly. They, they might step on a pin and they wouldn't feel it at all because they've lost that sensitivity. So again, the vitamin B is an example of a vitamin that we like to include, right? These days, I also tell people, you know, to be having some zinc as part of their multivitamin arrangement or whatever they're using, because it protects you from viruses. So these would be supplements that you'll discuss with your doctor, but uh, certainly they have a role and they enhance the diet. And I always bring up vitamin D, as Mark knows, because of the fact that we're low on vitamin D. He mentioned in the beginning, a lot of people are on their computers, they're inside, they don't really get outside to play as much as it used to be the case. So if the sun doesn't see you, you won't be forming vitamin D in your body. And if you don't form it in your body, well, you've got to get it from somewhere. And you might get it from milk, which is fortified with vitamin D or some of the foods. But usually, you need a good amount to come, you know, as a supplement. Well, so I tell our young friends, cod liver oil is a nice way to get it for little kids that don't want to be swallowing pills. As we get older, there are pills, you know, that have uh, several thousand units of vitamin D, boost your levels, and it really improves mood and many other things. Good for your bones, helps you absorb calcium, 
So um, another good consideration there. Yeah, well, I remember, especially when I was younger, you know, I drank a whole lot of milk, you know, and, and even with the vitamin D added to the milk, uh, you still showed that I tested a little bit light on the vitamin D, so you put me on a supplement. And how, how you kind of explained it was that uh, the vitamins let you cheat a little bit on the food. If you, don't, if you don't have vitamins, you have to get your food balance just exactly perfect. But if you have the right vitamins, then even if your food is a little bit off, if you're, if you're lacking something, then the vitamins make up for it. It gives you a little bit of a, a margin for error. Not, not a replacement for eating healthy, but a supplement that, that gives you a little bit of, uh, of cushion in case you, uh, you're not quite perfect on your eating. And that's another excellent point because it's very true. No matter how good you get at it, try to get your best food, the good food supply. Foods are not necessarily as rich in vitamins as they used to be. In part because of the processing that they undertake, the time they spend on the shelf and so on and so forth, you know. So therefore, it's a little different if you're right on the farm, you take it from uh, the cabbage patch or something and it's on your dish, you know, within an hour. And it's very different if you're picking it up from the supermarket where it's been, you know, for a little longer or freezers. Well, so uh, if that's true. I mean, you do need to help it. Well, and, and a good, my, uh, my neighbor, good example is my neighbor uh, raises chickens. And, you know, when I get some fresh eggs from my neighbor that, uh, that are, you know, no more than a day or two old, I can, I can definitely taste the difference between those and even the organic eggs that I buy at the supermarket that may have been sitting for a month. And I would imagine that that applies all across the board. That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, fresh food is very key. And now you see that because some of us uh, have seen those sprouts that they sell in uh, supermarkets and whatever. So some people, they just have those sprouts and they just pluck them right out of that little patch and they eat them raw without even cooking or anything like that. Because the understanding is that uh, the more natural and the quicker I grab it, eat it uh, from where it's being grown, the more nutritional value it has. So, I mean, that's great. But uh, as mentioned, it's not always possible. So we have to be realistic and accommodate and therefore absolutely you know together with your good meal and your plate and your food it's nice to add your vitamins under supervision so what about uh what about with exercise you never gave me that much advice on exercise because i was always wrestling or fighting judo or or backpacking bike riding. you know i'm i'm a, I'm a super active person so you never worried about it too much with me but for for people who aren't spending all their time getting dirty in the woods what what do you what do you advise uh, young people as far as exercise and stuff nowadays? Well, the Diabetes Association recommends that people get at least thirty minutes of exercise, you know, four to five times a week, um, and that's helpful. Certainly, in schools, it used to be that there was physical education at least, you know, one period where people would get out and run around. I don't know that that's happening as regularly these days. Now, some kids, of course, have soccer practice or they have some type of sport that they do, uh, softball or whatever, after school hours, and that's nice and helpful. But uh, it's good to have a little routine. And the simplest thing, obviously, is walking, you know, getting that form of activity. But uh, being in some type of sport like you were is very key. Uh, for, uh, for the older groups and so on, we tell them to get into a little routine. Your dad is uh, a big sports enthusiast and trainer, and he helped me a lot uh, and guided me through uh, many steps. So he kind of made it part of the lifestyle. He showed things that people can do on a regular basis so that it becomes part of your lifestyle and you will see the benefits over time, flexibility and so on. So uh, some people are into dance. Other people, as I said, are into walking or swimming or whatever they're doing. Get your sport get your activity, and then just keep it for the rest of your life. I mean, that's the thought process. You know, stay active because the body appreciates that, stays young when you give it the opportunity to flex and stretch. And, you know, it doesn't want to be inactive. And then I, that also probably carries into, uh, you know, fresh air and, and sunlight. You know, you've told me uh, uh, to try and spend at least a couple hours each day outside in the sunlight and, and, and fresh air. And, uh, and so I've been, I've been definitely doing that and that's, you know, well, I mean, it, it must be work cause I don't, it must work cause I don't get sick, but yeah. what is there, uh, 
that's and that's our energy source the sun is our energy source so we derive energy the sun's energy goes into the crops the sun's energy goes into the trees uh, and all of that of course then gets into our diet in various forms so without sunlight obviously you know there can't be life and uh, we can't recreate it as such so uh, very very important you'll see how your skin responds uh, how uh, your entire sense of well-being your mood improves you know with a proper bright uh, sunlight so to speak and uh, in climates where they don't have as much sunlight places much to the north you know, where they have short days, uh, people can get depressed and unhappy. And uh, they are using special type of light bulbs there so that people can have some sun light exposure, a, a form of light that comes to be similar to sunlight just for a few hours a day to kind of boost them. So uh, obviously in our area here, we can always get outside and we should outdoors uh, enjoy and uh, whatever you're going to do even your exercise better done in nature yeah so are, are there any other are there any other topics that you want to bring up before we uh before we wrap this up uh those are pretty much all of my questions it sounds like uh sounds like i just need to keep doing what i'm what i'm doing it seems to work uh what would you advise for somebody who uh, you know, I see a lot of these younger people, and they're probably twice the size that I was when I was their age. You know, a lot of the uh, there's a big obesity problem with uh, with young kids these days, high school students and whatnot. What? How do we get out of this mess? You know, how? Where 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 do we begin? Well, uh, I think that kind of is a good summary point uh, to conclude our discussion, which kind of brings it all together. So there's a there's a an epidemic in our country at the present time. And the epidemic that we have is not necessarily the virus or something. The epidemic happens to be obesity, the weight issue. And the weight issue is because of this diet, which is rich in starches, which promotes insulin to be produced in excess or soaks up insulin if we're taking shots and just makes us become big and huge and heavy and unhealthy. So uh, we start, as we said, by being picky with our diet. We want to be picky with a diet. We want to make sure that it's just the way we want it with the foods that we were describing. And uh, if it's not the way we want it, maybe, well, we might even skip it. I mean, that's how picky we get to be. And then with the exercise, we're going to stay active because we want our body, we want to be well ventilated in our lungs. We want to stretch our muscles. We want to be able, as we get older, to be able to tie our shoelaces, I tell people. So if you can't get to your shoelaces and you're reaching middle age, that's not a good idea. That's not a good way to be looking forward at things, right? So the diet and exercise is good. And one thing in closing to remind you is that sleep is very important. So sleep is something which the body needs to restore itself. And sleep is best done when it's dark outside. That's the cycle. So it's dark outside, the animals are sleeping, the farm is quiet. That's the time, the best time for us to sleep. During the day, the sun is out, things are bright, all the animals are out. That's the time that we need to be up and about doing things. If we try to reverse this and we sleep during the day and we're up at night, stuff like that, in the long run, it just grinds us down and messes up our blood sugar control if that's what we're trying to control the body doesn't appreciate that the body has its own mechanism it's set and primed to be there over the course of the day with sunlight and to go into a rest mode at night and it doesn't want to be alarmed alerted taxed with assignments during the rest period Okay, that's actually so you'll remember that sleep, diet and exercise. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I find that whenever I'm having to pull a bunch of late nights for work, um, that's when I tend to put on weight. And then once I get back to normal sleep cycle, in fact, probably my sleep cycle is the biggest, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest short term uh, thing that I notice. I can always tell when I haven't been sleeping well because I'll put on five pounds or so. That's right. 
And so that's what I wanted to remind our friends who are watching us today for our Diabetes Fair 2021. I think these were some thoughts that we wanted to share. Obviously, I may get to meet some of you when you join us in clinic or come to visit. And uh, obviously with the others, you can visit the website, which you'll see on this uh, particular video. Uh, you can also put questions through there. You'll see the blog, you'll find information about my book. And uh, it's a good meeting place as well. And of course, we have our diabetes educators who are always there and accessible and available to you. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. All right, well, thanks a lot for joining us, Dr. Mazidis, and we will see everyone next time.